bring in Professor Kevin Heaslib, Director at the Center for Transportation Research. Professor, we've seen the terrible video at this point over and over again. You see the power outage on this cargo ship, and then it rams into this uh, bridge, and the whole thing, or at least a big chunk of it, comes collapsing into the river. Would power outage cause a cargo ship to veer off course and lose control? They, when a ship loses power, then uh, the, they cannot uh, control the navigation of it, and the, basically the river will push the uh, ship where it wants to go, and in this case, it pushed it right into the pier, uh, which caused the devastating uh, collapse of the bridge. So what is the normal procedure for vessels of this size navigating big structures and bridges in the water? So the when a ship comes in and out of port, they have a local uh, pilot that will bring the ship in and out of port. These pilots have, bring uh, vessels in and out of all of these ports every day, and uh, hundreds of hundreds of vessels, hundreds of vessels of size. Uh, so there should not be a problem with the navigation of the uh, of the ports and the channel as long as the boat has the ability to navigate. In this case, the boat lost the ability to navigate, and that was what the first uh, step was towards this devastating event. So would you, and, I, and I'm put you, putting you on the spot here, asking you to speculate, but if you had to guess, do you think this was some kind of mechanical malfunction, or was it a human error that caused this disaster? You can see the lights go on and off, uh, which in my mind sense that uh, the crew knew that there was something wrong and they were trying to mitigate it, uh, but could not uh, mitigate it in time in order for to uh, avoid the collision. So in my mind, it does not seem like a uh, human error of the, of the navigation of the vehicle. Now, uh, whether or not it was error in the maintenance of the vehicle, that will come up in the investigation. And how unusual is it for a massive bridge uh, to just collapse the way it did? It takes uh, a huge amount of weight. Uh, this vessel has 200 million pounds of, of cargo on it. So uh, if I took a small boat and hit the pier, uh, nothing would have happened to it. But uh, with such a large boat and such uh, momentum, uh, it was not built for that, and we cannot build for that because the cost would be so high to mitigate such a thing that would hardly ever happen that we would not be able to uh, maintain our bridges in the U.S. So, uh, unfortunately, it's a, an incident that is a very low occurrence but very high impact, and um, the an unfortunate thing about it is that uh, you see what happens when a large amount of weight hits a main support structure for a bridge. What does it tell you also about the status of the infrastructure with so many of these aging bridges? I mean, just driving from Virginia to Washington every day, uh, m millions of commuters get on these bridges, and I can, I bet you many of them today were worried driving on those bridges. Yes, and, and I can understand that. However, in this case, it was not a matter of the design of the bridge or the maintenance of the bridge. The bridge was in very good shape, and any bridge that was hit, no matter where it was in the world, uh, with the, if it was hit in the same way with the force that from this boat, it would react the same way, unfortunately. So in this case, it was not a... Uh, it was not caused, it, there was no contributing factor due to deterioration of the bridge. And certainly, as your reporter said, uh, there have been funds allocated to bring up the, the uh, number, to reduce the number of the deficient bridges in the U.S., and that has been happening. So in this case, uh, we, we cannot blame anything besides the boat hitting the support of the bridge. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Professor Kevin, he slept. Thank you.